Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be exploring how to create a group chat in Flutter in Firebase. And as you can see, we have here three emulators, which I already have logged in in three different accounts. Here in the account tab, we can be able to view each profile details. This is San Miguel, this is Jose Rizal, and this is test user. Now here in the chats tab, we can see that all three users have no existing chats yet. So as you guys can notice, we have here at the app bar an option button. This option button gives us the option to create a group chat. And since all these users and since all these users can create a group chat, who do you want to create the group chat? Alright, so since we have here a rich kid using an iPhone user, let's allow this rich kid to create the group chat. So here, we need to specify the name of the group chat we want to create. Since this rich kid have two girlfriends, and he wanna chat with them as a group, let's name his group chat my girls. And down here, it is where we can add a member. In this group chat feature, we can have the option to add a member on the fly, and we can leave this empty and add a member later after the group chat has been created. So to test both functionalities at once, let's try to add this user first. Let's try to search test user here. Oops, I'm typing on the wrong place. Here it is. There you go. It's already been added. Now let's submit this to create. So there, as you can see, the group chat appeared from these two devices like magic because these two users are the members. And inside this chat screen, we have another option button here to choose whether we want to add a member or view the list of members. Since this rich kid is the one who created this group chat, he is automatically the admin. So he has the option to add a new member. And here in the other device, since this is not an admin, he doesn't have the privilege to add a member. He only has this view member option. And when we tap on this, we can see the list of the group chat members. So now, let's try sending a message. As you can see, the message is received by this rich kid in real time. And he can also reply back and appear here as expected. There you go. So since this rich kid wanna hear from his other girl, let's allow him to add his other girlfriend. So this is San Miguel. Let's find this uh, San Miguel here. Here we go. As you can see, after being added, you now have this group chat list style to indicate that he is a member of the chat. He can now tap on this to enter the group chat and can send a message as well. So let's try it. All right, as you can see, all these devices can now interact with each other. They can share their secrets with each other. 
and they can now even freely talk about gossips and spread as they wish. Another thing you may have noticed is this scene indicator. I also implemented here the scene feature similar to how Facebook implemented their scene feature in their app. This is an important feature for a group chat like this for user experience so that you can be able to see who viewed the message you sent. Alright, so how did I create this? Well, to give you a high level overview, let's try to examine how the moving parts under the hood are working together. The way this works behind the scene is when a user creates a group chat, he is essentially creating a document in Firestorm. This document contains the basic information about the group chat, for example the group chat title, the members, and the unique identifier of the group chat. So here in our group chat, we have this ID, chat room title that defaults to an empty string, the list of member IDs. We also have this activity attribute that holds the last message sent. This way, you can have easy access to the last message that you can display in here. We also have this is group boolean to know if the chat you are in is a group chat or not and this deleted and deleted at which is used for deleting this chat okay so let's see this in action let's create a brand new group chat let's name it brand new group chat okay Alright, this is now the group chat we have just created. Now, when the admin adds a member, the UID of the member will be added here, and the metadata will also be added here. So let's try to add a member. There you go. This now contains the newly added user ID and its metadata has been added here. Next up is when someone sends a message, this group chat document or what I usually call chat room creates a sub collection where the list of messages will be saved. Now, the system will stream this sub-collection so that when someone sends a message, all of the members can see the newly added message in real time. That's it. And for the scene indicator, when someone enters the chat room screen, the system will update this last read chat to the latest message ID that was sent so that it will reflect on the devices of the other members. All right, so it's code time. For the UI, I know you can create a more fancy UI than this. So let's focus on the functionalities, the create group chat function, add member function, and the send chat function. Here is our create group chat function. This takes the group chat title that is being entered here. And inside this function is this one. This is now our main function. It is where the logic resides. What we are doing here is to first fetch the current user from the auth repository. If the user is null, then we throw an error. If not, then we proceed with creating the chatroom object. 
I created the ID from the current date to make sure of its uniqueness. We assign the chat room title we took from this uh, text field. We then create the member IDs from this helper method. What this helper method does is to create a list, adding the current user ID as a default, and then iterating the list of selected members using a for loop to extract their UID and add it to the list. And then we use this spread operator inside the set to remove duplicates, and then convert it back to a list. And here, we create the member's metadata using another helper method. Inside here is a bit complex because it is where the mutation of an immutable class is happening. So we won't be diving into this because this is another separate topic to discuss. But in a nutshell, this creates a map of members metadata that was passed as a parameter. And in this activity, we simply create an activity with an empty values as a default. And once the chat room is complete, we pass it into this function. And this function is the one responsible for creating the document path of where the chat room will be saved and it converts the chat room object to a map using this to map method. After that, we now save the converted map to Firestore using this set method provided by this Firebase Firestore class. Now let's move on to add member function. This is our add member button which has a value of zero. So down here, when the pop-up menu with a value of zero is selected, this show model bottom sheet is triggered. And this renders this app user list widget that contains the list of app users. And inside this app user list is where we can find this add chat room member function. Passing the user that you have selected and the chat room where you want to add the selected user. And inside this function is where the magic happens again. First, we check the user if it's already a member, and if so, we return immediately to end the operation. Next, we create a copy of the existing chat room members, and then call this add member method, passing this app user's metadata. What this add member does is to create a copy of the existing members, and add the member that was passed, and then return the newly created copy. This is a technique on how to mutate an immutable object in Dart. After new sets of members has been created, we create a copy of this chat room using this copy with method and assign the new members created and the new sets of member IDs. After that, we pass this new chat room to this create chat room method. That is the same method we use for creating a brand new chat room. Alright, let's now move on to the send group message function. Here in the group chats is where we can find the send group message function that accepts this chat room, this chat object that contains the message, and the list of images if any. Inside this send group message, we first check if the message is empty and the images is empty. If so, we end the operation by returning. If either of the message or the images is not empty, we proceed by using this batch write provided by Firestore. Because we are writing a document and at the same time updating the chat room document. Here in the batch set chat, we are simply creating a document reference 
or if we want to save or write the message we can see that we are saving the message inside this rooms collection inside the chat room that we are in and inside the chat sub collection So after we set the chat or message, we update this chat room to save this last message sent to the chat room sub collection. So inside here, something magic is happening again. But in a nutshell, this updates the activity of the chat room and increment all the badges of the chat members. Once the updates are all done, we now commit the changes to take effect. So that's it guys. For fetching the list of chat rooms a user has, we use the stream. And we are querying only the list of chat rooms where the member IDs contains the ID of the current user. And in the chat room service class, We wrap this method with the stream provider from the RiverPad package. And in the UI, we display the result using this list view that's separated. For the list of chats or messages, it's the same thing. We fetch it using a stream. Wrap it inside the stream provider. And then display to the UI using the list view that's separated. Just like that. Alright, for displaying the scene indicator that you're seeing here, it's not that complicated as you might think. Here in our list view, we have here this scene indicator widget that takes a chat room, a chat, and a child. This chat room is this one, the uh, chat room that we are in, and this uh, chat is uh, this uh, message sent by uh, someone, and this child is this uh, chat bubble right here. So inside this scene indicator widget, we can see that it is composed of a column. And inside this column is this uh, child and below this child is uh, a uh, row of uh, user avatars. This one. So here in the uh, row widget, we loop on the uh, chat members using a for loop and check if the members last read chat is equal to the uh, chat ID and the member UID is not the current user. If this condition is met, then we display this user avatar that you are seeing here. And for extracting the list of members, we use this to room members list. And what this does is to fetch the members from the cache. And if the cache list is null, we map the members and convert it to a list. So that's it guys. And what you might be wondering is uh, if it's okay to save the list of members in this uh, chat room document. Well. For me, it's okay. Won't it hit the space limit of the document if uh, we have a large number of members? Well, if you have a small number of members, then it's okay. It's no problem. Although it's more complex to query, it saves you significant amount of reads and writes compared to saving them in the sub collection. And uh, I did the math and uh, 
find out that uh, if this is the only data you're saving for each user then uh, the maximum number of users you can add is up to 4200 members so i think that is already uh, generous enough so if you're to create a group chat and choose to save the members like this you can impose a limit to only allow a max of 3000 to 4000 members so that you won't hit the uh, the uh, max capacity of this uh, uh, document but in case you still want to create a group chat that allows to have a member of more than 4000 members then the best thing you need to do is to limit this to 4000 or 3000 to 4000 and the excess is you need to save it into another document this way your schema and querying mechanisms remain intact so uh, all right that's it guys I hope the concept and mechanisms are explained. Thank you for watching and see you next time.